Okay, so let's say that you're trying to figure out a certain amount of time. Well, you can use this equation. You can plug in this ratio and solve for the time. But let's say that they're asking you for n. Well, if they're asking you for n, you need to solve this for n. But in order to do that, you have to get rid of the natural log. So again, we have to review the mathematics that we went over natural logs. How can I rewrite this equation without a natural log in it? Uh, we need to put e right. to the Um, is that e to the n over n o? No? Let's check your notes. Okay. That would be this up here. So it's going to be e to the n over n o equals. Oh no 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 no! It's going to be what? We're looking for... We're trying to take this equation and get rid of the natural log by rewriting it in terms of E. So, can, do we need to first split with ln n and then minus ln n? Not in this so case. because the So what you're trying to use is this, right? Mm -hmm. This is what we went over last time. This means this. But this only oh. works if there's only one natural log on the left. If I split this up into ln n minus ln 0, this rule wouldn't apply to it anymore. So this is the way we have to work with it. Doing these then e to the negative kt mm -hmm. and equals n over n o. That's right. We're going to treat this yeah. as one thing. If we yeah. treat this as one thing, then we can use this rule. No, I see you. That's right. So if we study this rule carefully, we're not raising e to the x power or raising it to the y power. So we're not raising e to this power or raising it to this power. And now we've accomplished our goal. We've gotten rid of the natural log, so now we can solve for n. What would I do next here to solve for n? Uh, we multiply this side by n o. Yeah, we multiply both sides by n o. I mean, yeah, both sides, but we cancel. That's right. And that gives us this, which is another standard and important equation. Okay. We just did another little proof because it's good practice with natural logs. And it's good to see that we're not learning a bunch, we're not learning a bunch of separate equations. We're really just learning one or two equations that are different versions of each other. Mm -hmm. These two equations are just different versions of each other. One of them is expressed with a natural log and one's expressed with E. Just like these are two different versions of each other. Okay, so um, all right, so now I'll erase the little proof. So this gives us another key equation n equals n0 to the e negative kt. This is another equation you're very likely to have to use on solving problems. Mm -hmm. So, how do you know when to use this equation and when to use this equation? Well, if they're asking you to solve for k, this is more convenient. This is not convenient for solving for k because it's bundled up in this exponent. Or if they're asking you to solve for t, which equation is more convenient? The t one? The one where it's by itself, not where it's in the exponent. Okay. But if they're asking you to solve for n, we'll use this is more convenient because here it's not bundled into the natural log. So that's why we need to have both of these. Of course, you could just use one and then reuse these tricks to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. But these are usually both taught. Okay. okay. Also, um, we could also use this to find n over n0. Mm -hmm. Right, because we just saw that n over n0 is just e to the negative kt. So sometimes they don't ask you for n, they ask you for the ratio. But we could use that for this as well. This equation wouldn't be as useful for finding the ratio because it's inside of the natural log. So even though these both represent the same thing, sometimes one is more useful and sometimes the other is more useful. You gave me that list of uh, formulas that your instructor gave you. Did I take that from you? So in the list of formulas that your instructor gave you, yeah, so here's one of the formulas we've talked about. Activity equals kn. I think that's on the board. Uh, and here's the formula we just talked about. Right. And here's another formula for finding half-life. One thing that your instructor isn't putting down there is this formula. Even though this is, I think, maybe the most useful formula. So you might want to memorize this. Um, or remember, you don't have to memorize this. You could prove this from this by taking the natural log of both sides. So it's going to be ln of n over n o is just e to the negative kt, like, isn't it? It's going to be this one. Um. 
Oh, well, and then you would have to take the natural log yeah. of both sides. Then when you take the natural log of both sides, you can get this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but you may, maybe you don't want to do that type of proof during the test. Okay. So um, anyway, uh, this is a formula that your instructor left out, but this is actually very useful for solving problems, maybe the yeah. most useful one. Okay. So uh, here we have all these different formulas. What does N0 stand for again? N0, it's a material, uh, it's um, the nucleus, what we start with. Yeah, the original number of nucleus is at time zero. T tells you how much time has passed. So what does this stand for? It's how many um, remains. How many, many nucleuses, nucleuses remain. remain. This tells us how many nucleuses remain. That's right. Um, uh, uh, it, your, your instructor wrote it like this, to show that it's how many nucleuses remain after time T. Okay. So that would also be a, a reasonable way of writing it. What would be an equation then that would relate A and A0? Um, it's going to be the same as um, the ln of A over A. You could do this. Yeah. How about if you wanted to do this? It's going to be A equals A over the action rate. And the same with the mass. And there you go. You made my mind. That's right. But they're all proportional. They all have formulas that have the same basic form. Mm -hmm. This again really proves that the, the graph is a curve and not a straight line. This, it has exponential decay. Well, this is what the graph looks like for exponential decay, get, approaching asymptotically towards zero. Um, as time increases, what does common sense tell you will happen to n? As time increases, what uh, does n decreases? That's right. Is that consistent with this formula? As time increases, what's going to happen to negative kt? Is it going to go up or down? It's going to be um, up, but the number will be down. Then. So it's going to go down. Yeah. t and negative kt are inversely related because of the negative sign. The bigger t is, the smaller negative kt will be. So since the exponent is getting smaller, this will get smaller too. So this equation does say that there's an inverse relationship between time and n. The more time has passed, the smaller n is going to be. In fact, it gets closer and closer to zero. Okay. 